Welcome, everybody, to this episode of Walking Between Shadows. We're your hosts. I'm Ben Elliott. I'm Taryn. And this week, we're going to start uh, our new spring and summer episodes. We're going to really start off with an update on a case that we had reported on or a couple of cases we'd reported on from Kingsport, Tennessee. You want to tell us what those were? That's Layla Santanello and Holland Snap. Okay. So Kingsport, Tennessee, the recent disappearances of two young women from Kingsport, Tennessee have left their families distraught and authorities mystified. The 21-year-old Layla Santanello disappeared on June 27th and just months later on October 18th, 19-year-old Holland Snap seemed to disappear into thin air as well. Both girls were in vulnerable states when they went missing from the small city just two miles apart. The eerie similarities and connections between Layla and Holland have raised alarm bells for some of their family members who now fear the worst that a sinister trafficking ring or serial killer could be preying on victims in the area according to the sun who are layla santanello and holland snap Layla Santanello is 21 years old and Holland Snap is 19. Both vanished without a trace just months apart in this small town in eastern Tennessee known as Kingsport. Layla was last seen on June 27th wandering barefoot and disheveled near the AmeriCorps Motel on American Way. According to her family, she had been struggling with fentanyl addiction and had recently lost custody of her young daughter. She was also grieving a recent family loss that had taken an emotional toll. Who was that that she that Layla lost? That was her grandfather. Oh, okay. Um, he was pretty sick, and right before Christmas, I believe, of 2022, uh-huh. um, he committed suicide. Oh, gosh. So they, her family took a huge blow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So just four months later, on October 18th, Holland disappeared two miles away on Bell Ridge Drive. Like Layla, Holland suffered from addiction issues and mental health struggles. Her parents say she functioned at the level of a nine or 10 year old and was overly trusting of strangers. Both girls were vulnerable at the time they went missing. Yes. Yeah, okay. So another point that uh, we need to make is some similarities along the way between Holland and Layla. Sure. The family soon discovered Layla and Holland ran in the same circles and likely knew each other. Both mothers, Jennifer Santanello and Heather Snap, communicated after the disappearances and believed the cases could be connected. Adding to their suspicion is the physical similarity between Layla and Holland. The first thing I noticed about Holland is that she's a small person like Layla, said Jennifer. They're around 4 foot 10 inches tall and 100 pounds, so very small, childlike, adult girls, but in kid bodies. While Layla's stepmother, Brittany Zeitler, believes that the cases are merely tragic coincidences, the mothers hold out hope that uncovering links between Layla and Holland could help solve these mysteries. There could be a suspicious problem going on around here, said Jennifer. It's a scary world we live in these days. Anything is possible. So, Taryn, you've told me about this area yes. up there and and a place where they dispose of people. Can you tell tell that again so our listeners can understand what that means? Well, I have spoken with someone who also has a family member that, or a, a I don't know, maybe not a family member anymore, but used to be a family member um, that went missing up in that area as well. And um, what she found out was, you know, in Tennessee, the law is if you get caught sharing fentanyl, and I believe it's just fentanyl, uh -huh. with um, someone, and that someone passes away, overdoses, and you are still around um, for sharing that 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 drug, it uh -huh. will get you uh, second-degree murder charges. In well, there's no anonymity. Right. So if you're using drugs with someone and that someone dies and you call the police, mm -hmm. you could be charged with second-degree murder. And that's putting people in a very terrible situation, really. Yeah. Because we're, we're talking about addicts here. And, you know, I'm hearing that there's a certain place in, in East Tennessee around that area that there, it's just a body field. It's just a 
you know, it's just where people are dumping bodies. Do you think it's a field or do you think it's like a body of water? No, I say body field, but uh, it could be a body of water. It could be, you know, it could be a field somewhere. It could be out in the woods somewhere. You know, this is a very, Kingsford is pretty mountainous. You know, it's, uh -huh. it, there's a lot of ter rough terrain. And I mean, I don't, I don't know where this spot is. And I don't know if that's true. But yeah. I do know that in the state of Tennessee, if you do share fentanyl with someone, then you and that person dies, you will be charged yeah. with murder. Yeah. So by that standard, if drug addicts get together and, you know, consume drugs and somebody overdoses, they generally just are like a flock of birds and fly away. Exactly. They get rid of what they believe is the problem. Yeah. Not the human being, but the problem. Yeah. And they, And then it just gets a mess. Then it becomes a huge mess of, you know. Yeah, definitely something the state of Tennessee should look at, like how many people have to die, you know, it, as a result of addiction. But in this case, they die as a result of fear of prosecution. That's right. And there's ways to prevent that or stop that. That's right. So, yeah. all right. So Layla Stantonello's mother worries about the possibility of trafficking. Mm-hmm. Or a serial killer. With few leads, the families grapple with terrifying possibilities of what happened to Layla and Holland. A lot of things pop into my head, admitted Jennifer. I wonder about trafficking, but I, but also aren't serial killers the type to pick a specific height and weight and that kind of thing? Right. These are all statements by Layla's mom, Jennifer. Zeitler remains hopeful her stepdaughter will return alive and has worked tirelessly with a private investigator to unravel the timeline of strange events leading up to Layla's disappearance. Mm -hmm. The investigation revealed Layla had fled an altercation with her boyfriend just days earlier and had been staying with various friends before ending up barefoot and paranoid at the AmeriCorps Hotel in Kingsport. That's right. The last sighting placed her walking past a storage facility heading towards a wooded trail. Jennifer refuses to give up fighting for answers, but struggles to, pre to prevent her mind from envisioning the worst. My heart won't let me stop, she said. Layla didn't have any quit in her, and I'm not going to stop either. I'm going to keep going until it breaks me or until we find her. So, I mean, it, we got to get to the big, ugly elephant in the room here. Yes. So, as I as I read through that article and scroll just past it, the first thing that comes up is this kid, Riley Strain, that disappeared in Nashville and was ultimately found in the Cumberland River dead Yeah. Very just sad. a day or two ago. Yeah, very sad circumstances. But here's the ugly elephant in the room. And you and I have talked a lot about this and... You know, we may or may not stick to this subject matter. It just depends. So as this college student from Mizzou, uh, which is where we live, right. uh, went to Tennessee for a formal for his um, fraternity. And, you know, they were out partying and drinking and uh, they were at Luke Bryan's bar and he was kicked out of there. And yet his friends were not allowed to leave with him. And I understand his friends wound up having to go out the front of the building and Riley was actually sent out the back. That's my understanding. Okay. Yes. All right. Now we'll bring this full circle to Layla and, and uh, Holland here in just a second. Sure. So the point is, you know, when this kid went missing, the entire earth flipped inside out. Oh, the media. The media coverage. The people that just went out of their way to look for this kid. Right. And ultimately found him, not in the state they wanted to, obviously. But what would have happened, or where would we be with Layla and Holland today if people like the Cajun Navy would go help find them? Right. Because they came up to Nashville to look for Riley Strain. And they also now have extended their search to um, Hendersonville, where Sebastian Rogers went missing. The 15-year-old um, autistic boy uh -huh. that went missing there. Uh -huh. um, they, and as a, the last thing I've heard about that is they may have hit on something with Sebastian right. as well. So it looks like they're pretty effective 
Yeah, I, I think uh, you and I talked about them being maybe a crew of retired officers or investigators and stuff. So they've got the experience behind them. And this is not bashing just on them. Not not at all. No. The point, what they're doing is great work. The point is, what's the difference in Riley Strain disappearing in Layla Santanello or Holland Snap? And there's many of those types of cases out there. There's even laws and there's even laws that protects Holland Snap and Layla Santanella, like the Holly Bobo Act, um, that extends the third from 18 to 21. Yeah. So to me, you know, I, I, I'm. It, it's. It's extremely frustrating, frustrating, is what it is. Frustrating. Layla has been missing for nine months. Mm-hmm. And Holland, you know, what, six? Uh, yeah, six. That's right. Right. And. You know, even getting a ground search for Holland, I I don't believe that they've done that. I know that there has been volunteers, but volunteers can only bring volunteers. Right. Um, Well, and Taryn, part of this big, ugly, ugly elephant in the room is... They are going out of their way to keep this in front of whatever crowd they can get it in front of, but it has not garnered the national or global attention that Riley Strain garnered. It, it just it does not make sense. No, you know, and, and we can go through tons of cases like this everywhere. This happens yeah. every single day to younger women, yeah, um, or women in general, yeah, uh, that may have some type of history with drug abuse or um, mental health issues, and they're just forgotten. But Okay, what's the case where the girl jumped out of the window and they waited nine months to even look? That was Caitlin Ledbetter. She was 26 years old, and she did go missing from East Tennessee as well. Mm-hmm. That was years ago. I, I know they didn't do a search for Caitlin until nine months after she was reported missing. Oh, yeah. It, it makes you absolutely... There was not even much talk about mm-hmm. Caitlin. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the point being is it's not about necessarily people volunteering to help, you know. Right. This is about why are the police agencies and investigators not doing anything on some of these cases that are still pretty fresh cases. And yet you got a college kid who probably tripped and fell into the river. I'm not going to say, you know, what happened there, but that's where he wound up. And again, so very unfortunate. Very. This is not about whether or not Riley deserved any attention. Sure. It's about whether or not... Everyone else deserves that type of attention. Yeah, everybody else needs that kind of attention. And we're quick to judge, you know, oh, they, did, they had mental issues. Right. Eh, they're not worth our time. There's so many true crime podcasts and these sleuths on TikTok and on Facebook and everywhere, you know, in the true crime community. Come on, y'all. Jump on the Layla Santanello case and haul and snap. Yeah. Because it's just, I don't understand either. I do not understand at all. I see Layla's mother fighting for her every single day. Yeah. And hurting very, very bad. And this woman is the John Wall. Of, you know, of Tennessee. Yeah. Because she's not only standing up for Layla, but she also is fighting for Sebastian. She was also putting out TikToks for Riley. She was also, you know, putting out stuff for Holland. Yeah. And she's got the followers. Yeah. Yeah, she does. Well, I, you know, obviously some of these law enforcement agencies don't have the the bandwidth or money. It's a very expensive proposition to go out and look for people. Sure it is. And, you know, groups like the Cajun Navy and, you know, there's others out there that get donations to fund what they do. Um and if anybody knows a group like that, please put this in front of them. You know, it, we would be willing to, you know, talk to them if if necessary. Um, but again, Layla Santanello and Holland Snap and all of them. Yeah. What's the baby that's been missing? Summer Wells. Summer Wells. They're just as important as Riley Strain. And I, I'm afraid our society picks and chooses based on affluence, color of their skin, age, you know, the circumstance is probably what's most dictating this, is what I feel. It makes 
makes me scared. It scares me that if something happened to one of my children or grandchildren or, you know, yeah, it's like the girls, that how, how hard would it be to fight? You know, like, I mean, how, how much of a fight would I have to put up to get the, the, the police on, on their case? You know, yeah. it worries me. It worries me. Well, our inaugural case, um, Debbie and Ambrio. Yes. As, as we dug deeper into that, we felt like maybe that's what had happened is so much time had passed that the resources just weren't, you know, available to it. Um, and the administration had changed hands two or three times yeah. and it got, it's lost in the, in the mix, you know, and, and I think that happens too with some of these older cases, obviously, but well, yeah, we, we need people to stand up and pay attention. So that's why I want to also mention, don't forget when you get to this episode, hit that like and subscribe button, uh, click that notifications bell so you can see new stuff there because that's what keeps us going. It's it's about information being kept in the public eye. It's not about who's making money here and there and you know who's who cares. It, it's about getting the information in front of people. Right. And I do want to talk about some updates in both of those cases. Okay. So on March the 4th, uh, Tennessee or the TBI and the Kingsport police released um, a little bit of information. They arrested Michael Thompson. So, if you can, that was Layla's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And on past episodes, we kind of went through um, the last couple days with Layla and Michael. Yeah. And um, there was some cash app requests sent from Layla's cash app account about a week to two weeks after she was reported missing. Oh. Um. These cash app requests were sent to Jennifer Santanello and to Layla's stepmother, Brittany, and her father mm-hmm. in New Jersey. I believe those two are in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Her mother is in Kingsport. But these, these cash app uh, requests mm-hmm. were um, be horrifying. If you can imagine being having a, a lost child, you know, yeah. and getting cash app requests. Saying they will not let me go. Um, if you don't pay this money, they're going to cut me into pieces. Mm-hmm. And some investigating was done, and they did find out that Michael Thompson was the one that was sending those cash app requests. Oh, fun! Right. So they they did arrest him. Um, I believe he was indicted on February the fourteenth, but I, I don't know if he wasn't arrested until March the fourth. Uh huh. And um, he was arrested for extortion and impersonating a missing person. Yeah. I think he only had like a $15,000 bond. So it, is he still in jail? That I do not know. Uh-huh. I hope nobody made that little box bond. But here's the thing. So Layla went missing, or she was reported missing on June the 27th, which was a Monday. Uh-huh. Uh, Michael Thompson and Layla got into an argument on a Friday night. Michael Thompson starts sending Jennifer uh, messages via Facebook on Layla's Facebook account. Uh And I can, you know, Jennifer, do you know where Layla's at? And started getting her upset that whole entire weekend with sending messages, you know, here and there. And stated that Layla just left his house without her shoes, without her purse, or without her phone, or without anything. Um, so something had to ha- happen that made her flee wherever she was immediately. Right. Now, Michael has went around since Layla went missing and told several stories to people. Uh-huh. Um, at one point, he, he contacted a girl that was an acquaintance of, of Layla, maybe kind of a friend with Layla. Mm-hmm. And stated that he knew where she was and that they needed to go pick her up. And this girl's like, let's go, you know. So they get in the car and they go and um, he runs in and comes back out and um, says that she's already gone. Hmm. That they've already, he runs into this place and says, yeah, she's already gone. Really, what he was doing was using her for a ride and um, to get drugs. Yeah. He also has 
related to someone that Layla and he were doing a romantic night out by some body of water and they were swimming and having a good time Mm -hmm. together and they got back on the shore and they were um, decided to share drugs and Layla overdosed and I don't know if he left her there but do you think maybe he took her somewhere else I don't know here's the thing he also claimed that um, in these cash app requests from Layla that 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 her boyfriend mm-hmm. owed money to someone, and until he paid off his debt, they were going to hold Layla. Oh. And um, so he's sketchy to me. And if they got into this argument on a Friday night, did he let her leave, or did he owe somebody something at the Ameriport? For drugs. Uh-huh. Did he thin Layla that way? And did she get scared? Because it said that Layla was a fearless human being. Right. And um, ev- everybody's account of Layla at the Americourt from Saturday through Monday claimed that she was terrified. Mm-hmm. And she was trying to hide in the shadows. And when the police showed up for a totally different reason, not her, she freaked out. Yeah. So I don't know if, you know, if she was there and maybe, you know, got with the the wrong people Mm -hmm. because of a a debt that Michael owed. Maybe he was the one that fled suddenly. Right. Yeah. And left her in somebody's hands. Could have been. And that's just me speculating. Mm Mm-hmm. She was seen at the AmeriCorps and behind the AmeriCorps, and that's the last place she was seen. Yeah. At first, they stated that they thought someone else was her at the Marble Lab Primary, uh-huh. um, but that was not her. That was someone else, and they have rolled that out for okay. Big Lila. Okay. So it's yeah, because initially we thought that somebody there had actually reported seeing her and talking to her. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that it was somebody else. It was someone. It was another okay. domestic violent uh, situation with a female that was wearing the same thing Layla was wearing. Yeah. Barefoot, too. Yeah. And, uh, trying to get away from a uh, abusive house. Gotcha. So, yeah. And that that worries me. You know, are, do we know those friends that she went to the AmeriCorps with or that she left Michael's house with? If, we, if the police know, they're sure not going to tell. Tennessee does not tell anything. Right. It was a huge surprise that they said anything, you know, about Michael Thompson. Mm-hmm. And just learning what he has said to other people about the, you know, them swimming that night and her over them, her overdosing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the account with the girl that took him to a trailer or, or house somewhere and he ran out and said Layla was gone. And, yeah. you know, those are those are just things that I've heard um, Jennifer State on TikTok, you know, on some of her reels and TikTok. So that's just some information I picked up by following her. Uh-huh. And she has something all the time. And I encourage everyone to look at Jennifer Santanello's profile and yeah. find out as much as you can about Layla because she is still missing and they still need answers. Yep. Yep. And she's always posting updates on her end. So, yes. Yeah, yes. definitely look her up and, and follow Jennifer. So, Layla is um, approximately 410 and 115 pounds. She has dyed blonde hair with dark roots and really big, beautiful brown eyes. Yep. Um, I hate miss her. Yep. Okay. What about um, Holland? Do you have any new information about Holland? Yes, I do. And okay. this disturbs me. This disturbs me on every level. Uh-huh. So Holland went missing on the Bell Ridge Drive area or on that road um, on Which October is, the 15th. Yeah, as the crow flies, it's northwest of where Layla was, but only about, uh, what do we say, five miles away? Yeah. Yeah, not far. Um, I looked a little bit on Holland's uh, Facebook. Uh-huh. And, you know, we talked about, you talked about a little while ago in that article. Um, she was trustworthy. She trusted, I mean, a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But she trusted a lot of people, even if they didn't need to be trusted a lot. So I looked on her Facebook a little bit, and I saw where she was asking for a ride. 
Mm-hmm. And this was just right before her, you know, she disappeared. So some witnesses did come forth on, on uh, Holland's case mm-hmm. and claimed to have seen Holland on the Bell Ridge Drive uh, area mm-hmm. in a home with a really big 51-year-old man. Holland was supposedly laying on the couch, and he was severely beaten. Mm-hmm. And it said that um, this man, I do not know his name, and they have not released any names yet, but this man has um, did get some help in disposing of Holland's body. This sickens me. This makes me so sad. Uh-huh. Colin was 19 years old, or is 19 years old, and had the mentality of a 9 or 10-year-old child, Mm -hmm. and had went through some tough stuff in her life. Um, He was in foster care for a while, and I believe she was already a teenager before she was adopted by Heather Snap. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel for her. I feel for her mother and her entire family, but yeah. don't know who this man is. And oh, I hope they found him. But now, Holland him already. Holland wasn't from there originally, right? I believe she was. From, I mean, she was not from far from Kingsport. I mean, it was just like a twenty-minute drive, and I know she had to go in and out mm-hmm. to go to to get mental health. Gotcha. Help. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like. You know, you had to go from a small, small town to, you know, a little bit yep. bigger area to get that mental health help you need. Yeah. Okay. So, but, you know, with the, Holland being, Holland is only 4'8". Uh-huh. She is approximately 80 pounds. And um, she has brown hair and hazel eyes. And she's a tiny little thing. Yeah. And I can see why, you know, everybody's minds went to... Two different things. You know, we both, we all, with the first podcast we did, you know, with both of them, my mind jumped completely to sex trafficking mm-hmm. just because they're so small and people are so sick. And, you know, it's just so the coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then I thought also maybe the serial killer, they do target people that look the same Mm -hmm. and have the same build and these two girls do yeah i mean but now with the things i found out and now michael thompson they say is pretty much cleared right now they or they don't have any evidence at this time to um charge him with murder right um and he's, they don't, they can't find any evidence. I know his house has been searched. They've gone through all of his computer stuff, you know, phones. Mm-hmm. Um, he's been given a lot of detector tests. And with Holland, they've been a lot more hush hush about this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if they have anybody in custody right now. I don't know who this 51 year old man is. Yeah. Um, I know he's an, <laughs> if it's true, then he is. I hope he gets exactly what he deserves. Yeah. And that goes for Michael Thompson as well. Yeah. I hope he gets exactly what he deserves. Yep. So. Yep. He's guilty. He de- he deserves it. All right. Well, thanks for the update there. Yeah. And um, I want to say to the audience, once again, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And we appreciate it when you leave comments. So don't hesitate to leave comments. And don't forget to smash that notifications bell so you know when new content comes out. Get ready because we're going to start loading it up. Yes. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again on the next episode. Bye.